A book about the people of a town should certainly include a Christmas story. Window on Main Street has one. One which started in a rather unlikely place. The deserted lobby of the Majestic Hotel at 5 a.m. It was the day before Christmas and not a creature was stirring. Except the janitor. And a book writer I know who had just stumbled out of bed looking for a bite of breakfast before getting an early start on his work. Oh, hello. <laughs> Mr. Brooks, good morning. Good morning. Friday, Weihnachten. Huh? That means Merry Christmas. Oh. Well, Christmas doesn't start till this evening. Don't you know it's indecent to be so jolly this early in the morning? What are you doing up so early? Trying to get a day's work done by noon, so I'll have my afternoon free to start my Christmas shopping. Start it? The day before Christmas? And you haven't even started? I always wait till the last day. By then, the stores are about sold out, and I just take what's left. Much easier that way. <laughs> Is that lunch counter around the corner open? All hours it's open. Oh, Tannenbaum, oh, Tannenbaum. What's your secret? Secret? This unfettered, jolly spirit of yours. I'd like to package that and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you believe in Santa Claus, Mr. Brooks? Naturally. Well? If you do today any of your shoppings at the Emporium, go and see Santa Claus there. He will tell you my secret. Oh, Tannenbaum, <laughs> oh, Tannenbaum, wie treu sind deine Blätter. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, Chris. I, uh, I want to see Santa. You want to see Santa Claus? Well, no, I mean, I, I uh, want to ask him something. You want to ask him for a choo-choo train? <laughs> All right. This is a personal matter. It's a secret. Oh, sure. Well, I'll meet you back here. Uh, careful now. Don't slide off Sandy's lap. <laughs> Well, well, who is this pretty little girl? Don't you know? I wrote you a letter. Don't you remember? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Oh, I know you quite well. You are... Uh, what does your papa call you? Same as my mommy calls me. <laughs> and that is? Same as I put in the letter, you know. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, tell me. What do you want Santa Claus to bring you? My gosh, Sandy, I put that in a letter, too. Don't you read your mail? Oh, of course, it's a good letter, too. Have you been a good girl? Oh, I have been. At least this last week. <laughs> but that is not enough. You see, Christmas, the spirit of Christmas, is not just for one day, or one night, or even one week. We should have it all year long. So from now on, little one, I want you to be good all year. You understand? Yes, Sandy. You're nice. Bless you, little one. Oh, Mr. Brooks, you came. Yes, and I can well see what the secret of your happy spirit is. Carry on, Santa. Well, there is another pretty little girl. <laughs> what is your name? I, uh, her sister. She won't my name her with Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, did you get to see Sandy? Yeah. And guess who it is? Ludwig, the janitor at the hotel. Oh, yes. He's been doing it for years. <laughs> and a very good Santa, too. Oh, the kids love him. He's having the time of his life. Well, now, is there any shopping I can help you with? Well, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, that? That's my laundry list. <laughs> Here it is. A uh, bag of peanut brittle for Chris Logan. 
Flannel nightcap for Chris Logan. Look, I'm not going to help you by my presence. Lovely as they sound. <laughs> I should be home anyway. Don't forget, we're expecting you about six tonight. Oh, uh, Chris, you're sure I'm not horning in on your Christmas Eve? Now, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, Christmas Eve is a family affair, and I am sort of an outsider. Oh, hush now. Arnie would never forgive you if you didn't come. Neither would I. So go buy my peanut brittle. <laughs> we'll see you later. I'll be there. Mr. Brooks? Huh? Oh, Mrs. Webster, come in. I can't stay but a moment. I just want to give you this little gift before I leave. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mrs. Webster. <laughs> Here, let me get unloaded. You say you're leaving? Going to spend the holidays with my nephew's family. Oh. My train leaves in 40 minutes. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, it looks like everybody's going to have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Especially Ludwig. Yes. Oh, I hope you didn't spend over eight or nine hundred dollars for this because I only paid seven hundred for yours. <laughs> That gift wrapper at the Emporium didn't put labels on these packages, so you'll probably wind up with a box of cigars. <laughs> I, uh, I think this is it. Oh, oh. oh. no damage done. Uh. My Mrs. Brooks was a pretty thing. Had you been married long? Nearly five years. That picture was taken just before our last Christmas together. It happened shortly after that. She and the baby had taken the car. And the streets were icy. Who knows why these things happen? Well, she certainly was pretty. What was her name? Selma. Sweet, wistfully witty, worldly, naive Selma. And oh, so impractical. <laughs> I remember once she decided we had to cut down expenses. So she got rid of our record player, said we could get along without that. And uh, what did she do with the money she got for it? Made a down payment on a Siamese cat. <laughs> well, that was Selma. <laughs> oh, but here I'm talking so much, you'll be late for your train. Oh. Here's your box of cigars, Mrs. Webster, and have a wonderful Christmas. Now you do the same. Myrtle will clean your room while I'm gone. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Hello, Cameron. Oh, hi, Selma. I mean, Chris, excuse me. You need what? Cranberry sauce? Yes, please. If you can find a store open. That's the one thing I forgot. Are you about ready to come over? Are you feeling all right, Cameron? You sound, I don't know. Sad. No, feel fine. Great. And I'm about to change into my Christmas sweatshirt with satin sash and be on my way. <laughs> right on. Goodbye. On my way to Chris Logan's for Christmas Eve dinner, my spirits were, frankly, at low ebb as the image of Selma, my departed wife, remained in my thoughts. But the sight of Ludwig, the most truly jolly Santa Claus I had ever met, raised my spirits once again. Coming. Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. Come on. Is it snowing? Ah, eh, just enough. <laughs> Hey, you look all slicked up there, Arnie. What do you think this is, Christmas or something? Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me help you with some of this junk. Oh, good idea. Huh. Hey, you better not shake that too hard. I might have a banana cream pie in there. <laughs> Cameron! Hey! Merry Christmas. Thank you, dear. <laughs> hey, don't be so snoopy, Arnie. <laughs> Put it under the tree. Wait! Put these under oh. there with it. Thank you. That a boy. Yeah. Ah, oh, you remembered. Naturally. How about the snow? Right on cue, huh? Just as though we ordered it for tonight. <laughs> Here, let me take your things. Uh, you go over and warm yourself by the fire. Good. Arnie, I need you. Coming, Grandma. Mother's making 
making a famous wassail bowl, and as soon as she's finished, she... What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I... Uh, when did you get this churn? Oh, that's one of Mother's Christmas gifts to me. It's not really an antique. It's just a copy of an old New England piece. They have them at the Emporium. It, uh, it's almost exactly like one Selma and I had at our place in Connecticut. She bought it at an auction. In fact, it was her Christmas gift to me. That was our last Christmas. Oh, excuse me, Chris. For what? I don't mind if you talk about Selma. In fact, I, I'd like to know more about her. Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, here it is. <laughs> Oh, but I don't know. The recipe just didn't turn out right this year. You say that every year, Mother. <laughs> but this time, I just didn't get the spices right somehow. According to you, you haven't gotten the spices right for as long as I can remember. <laughs> well, here's to... Santa Claus. To Fanny. Hmm. Mm. Delicious. Too sweet. Oh, I forgot the paper napkins. Arnie. Yeah, okay. Honey, take this with you. Well, sit, sit down and be comfortable. Uh, Mother, Cameron was just telling me that his wife, Selma, once bought a churn almost exactly like that one. I mean, I'm sure the one that she got was a genuine antique, right? Probably. Personally, I like the newer antiques. They don't look so... so old. <laughs> Thanks, dear. They're cheaper, too. <laughs> you know, you've been pretty stingy with information about Selma. Where did you meet her? In Connecticut? No, New York. At an advertising agency where I worked for a while after the war. <laughs> it was kind of funny the way it happened. I was new there, and I just finished writing some ad copy, and I needed a girl to type up some clean copies. So? So I went out of my office, and the first girl I saw was Selma. I didn't know her then. And I asked if she'd mind copying some material I had, and she said she'd love to. So I handed her the material and went back into my office. Suddenly, I was surprised to discover she'd followed me in. I don't blame her. <laughs> and she sat down at my typewriter and started typing with the worst, most painful two-finger system you ever saw. I couldn't believe it. I said, Miss, how long have you worked here? She looked up and said, Oh, I don't work here. I'm looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the turkey. We've left it in too long. Oh, yes, we forgot it. Now, don't go away, Cameron. I want to hear the rest of this. <laughs> Grandma's done it again. Handkerchiefs. <laughs> Same thing every year. Never anything useful, like like football shoes. For months, I've been hinting that's what I need. But you see, handkerchiefs. Sounds like the time I got a churn for Christmas. I kept hinting I needed golf clubs. As a matter of fact, that's what I thought it was. Same general size package, you know. But when I got the wrappings off, there it was. A butter churn. Oh, must have been awful. Well, I tried making jokes about it, but my wife got a little mad. She thought I was making fun of it. But then we made up, and I remember her saying to me, Well, go on. What'd you say? Oh, it's nothing you'd be interested in, Arnie. It's not important. Well, no damage done. The turkey's in fine shape. Cameron, how are you on carving? Chris, I, uh... uh yes? Uh, it's difficult for me to explain, but I... I can't stay. Can't stay? Cameron, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. It's, uh... Oh. Please forgive me. I know this is awful, but... I... hope you'll forgive me, Chris. Well, of course. If you feel like coming back later on... Thank you, Chris. Good night. And Arnie, search me. He was telling me something his wife had said to him. And he stopped right in the middle. 
and looks sort of sad like. Oh. I see. Merry Christmas, Seth. Honest, Selma, I have the least idea what this is. But I'll bet it's something to help me lower my golf score. A butter churn? Isn't it lovely? I saw it at an auction and I just couldn't resist it. You don't like it. No, I think it's great. This is something I've always wanted. Even as a boy, I always remember dreaming of the day when I... Own my own churn. I shouldn't have bought it. Well, of course you should. Just think of all of the wonderful evenings I can spend making my own butter. Now, what more could a man ask? You're making fun of it. Oh, now come back, Salma. I'm only kidding. Of course I like it. It's... It's beautiful. Do you really think so? Sure. I'd love anything you give me. Anything that reminds me of you... It's beautiful to me. Well, I guess it was kind of a silly present. Not at all. You know I'm crazy about butter. Oh, <laughs> you. Merry, merry Christmas, honey. Oh, Cameron. If only we could always be this happy and spend all the future Christmases together. What do you mean, if? Of course we'll spend them together. We never know what's ahead of us, really. I have strange feelings about such things. But let's vow that even if for some reason we're apart, we'll always spend our Christmases together in spirit. Wherever we are on Christmas Eve, we'll each go out for a walk in the snow and look up at the moon. And there, we'll see each other. Rodrigue, wait a minute. What's the matter with you? Oh, hello, Mr. Brooks. What's happened, Ludwig? Where's that fine spirit of yours? When I saw you come out of the store, I felt you were just the man I needed to raise my spirits. But you... Are you sure there's nothing the matter? Everything is the matter, Mr. Brooks. This is the worst moment of the year for me. The worst moment? Christmas Eve. Just when Christmas is really beginning for everyone else. It's over for me. Over? Why over? Here, you don't look very well. You'd better sit down. Oh, the help isn't supposed to sit out here in the lobby. Oh, that's ridiculous. Sit down. All year long, I look forward to this season, to the hours when I sit there at Santa's chair. And all those little children come to me with those big, excited eyes and listen to every word I tell them. And I bring joy to them. And I forget even who I am. Then comes Christmas Eve. The store closes. I take off this suit line up for my paycheck and it's over. I go dead inside. Oh, no. Ludwig. Children who loved me a few hours ago 
don't even look at me now. Now I'm just a man who, who mops floors. It's over. Ludwig, didn't I hear you telling those children that the spirit of Christmas was not just for one day or for one week, but for all year? Yeah, but that was for them. Oh, for you too. And I realize for me too. Look, Ludwig, we can't cling to what happened an hour ago or a few days ago or years ago. You and I have the job of living each new hour as it comes along. For you, maybe. Not for me. For both of us. We can't sit around stewing in our self-pity. Come on. This is Christmas Eve. Let's go. I have no place to go to. Yes, you do. On your feet, Ludwig. We're on our way. Who can that be? Just when they're ready to sit down. Anybody home? Cameron, come in. We were just getting ready to eat. Huh? Mother, put the extra place back on. You'll have to put two extra places on. Two? Who? <laughs> you sound like an owl. <laughs> I would never take the liberty of inviting someone to your home. But there's one guest Christmas Eve wouldn't be complete without. Enter! Santa Claus! Come in, Sally! Hi, Sally! Well, my star! Oh, Tannenbaum! Oh, Tannenbaum! Wie treu sind deine Blätter! Sie sprechen Deutsch? Ja, but not very much! Oh, that is enough! <laughs> oh, Tannenbaum! Oh, Tannenbaum! Oh. Join in, my boy! I don't know those words! We will teach you! Oh, Christmas tree! Oh, Christmas tree, thy leaves are so unchanging. Chris, Chris, how can I tell you what is in my heart? Well, try. My behavior tonight was atrocious. But you, you, you're a rare person, Chris, with understanding beyond belief and with beauty that runs all the way through. And I, I feel, Merry Christmas, Chris. Hey, Mom, I can talk Deutsch, listen. <laughs> Ready, men, all together now. Oh, Tannenbaum, oh, Tannenbaum, we trois in deine Blätter. Du grünst nicht nur zur Sommerzeit, nein, auch im Winter, wenn es schneit. Oh, Tannenbaum, oh, Tannenbaum, we trois in deine Blätter. <laughs> 